Day 10 of World Cup has ended, and today we started the customary simultaneous game. So I had to choose between Holland versus Qatar or Ecuador versus... So Ecuador versus Senegal was entertaining, if not frustrating for me, as I always root for my fellow South American brothers to do well in World Cup. It was sad to see Ecuador pretty much get slammed against their own net for the entirety of the first half, trying to bet on a counterattack that never came. Senegal got a penalty, and then it was pretty much over for Ecuador. Uh, the only thing that made Ecuador open up was that goal, and then they looked for a way in. Sadly, once they got the tie, they went back to attempting to protect that tie, and it lasted for three minutes before Senegal turned it right back onto their side. Never go into a game to play for a tie, because it'll always come back to bite you in the ass. <coughs> So, we bid farewell to Ecuador in this tournament. Still, a glorious three-goal send-off for legend Ener Valencia in his last World Cup ever. I can't imagine what a crappy game the Netherlands versus Qatar match must have been. 2-0 to zero by minute 49? Ugh. Once again, Qatar, why did you waste $200 billion on hosting a party you knew you weren't going to enjoy? Here's the final standings for Group A. Netherlands first with 7 points, Senegal second with 6 points, Ecuador and Qatar officially eliminated. Qatar very much looking like the candidate for the very last place with only one goal in favor and 7 against. Guess we'll have to see just how badly the other groups do, but so far, Qatar is the only team that's been incapable of netting any points with 3 defeats. I think the only other nation that can say that, the only nation so far unable to pick up a single point other than Qatar has been Canada. Now there's been a clear favorite for the Group B matches that I was gonna watch, and it sure as hell wasn't going to be Wales versus England. With Wales needing four goals to make it through, my choice was obvious. I went with... So USA vs. Iran was entertaining, if not hilarious for me, as I just finished watching another game where a team playing for a tie got wrecked by this strategy for the second time in the same day. It was sad to see Iran pretty much get slammed against their net for, well, actually the entirety of the match, because Iran barely even attacked. You know... Timothy Weah had so many chances to score, but he kept looking like he was afraid to take a shot. And the one time he finally puts it in, it was offside. It took Pulisic almost breaking himself for the U.S. to finally be ahead, like they deserved. The stats speak for themselves, folks. Never go into a game to play for a tie, because it'll always come back to bite you in the ass. So we bid farewell to Iran and Wales, eh, who obviously couldn't do anything against England. I mean, funny, Netherlands scored all their goals before minute 50, and England scored all their goals after minute 50. I can't imagine what a crappy game the England versus Wales match must have been. <laughs> Group B's final standings are England first with 7 points, USA second with 5 points, Iran and Wales officially eliminated. See you tomorrow as I suffer through Argentina's game versus Poland. Laugh at me if we lose. We'll deserve it.